Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Dr. Marquis of Thalmology Tutorials. Today we shall discuss ectropion. So, before going to ectropion, you should be familiar with the surgical anatomy of the eyelids as well as the frequent words which are used when I explain pathophysiology and even the surgical correction of the ectropion. So, if you missed the video on those, please go to my previous video on ectropion where I have covered all these and then you can start with the present video. Okay, so without much delay, let's begin the video. So, what is the definition of ectropion? Ectropion is nothing but aversion of the eyelid, margin and the eyelashes. Okay. So, what causes ectropion? It can be congenital or it can be acquired. In acquired, again, it can be because of the age related changes which are seen in the medial canthal tendon, lateral canthal tendon, and even the horizontal lid laxity, along with the weakness in the orbicular circular muscle that constitutes your involutional ectropion. Or there can be paralysis of the orbicular circular muscle because of the facial nerve palsy. Even that is also cause of your paralytic type of ectropia. There can be secretarial changes secondary to burns or trauma involving the skin and the underlying orbicular circular muscle which constitutes your secretarial ectropia. Or even there can be something over the eyelid like a tumor or a mass which is involving the lid margin that can also pull the eyelid out. That is the reason for your mechanical ectropia. It can be broadly classified into congenital type and acquired. In acquired we have involutional or senile secretarial, paralytic and mechanical. Next is what are functions of the lower eyelid. One is as with the upper eyelid it also helps in protection of the entire surface of the eyeball. The second is it plays a very important role in the drainage of the tear film. One is by keeping the punctum in the lacus lacrimalis so that it is drained out. The second is by helping in the lacrimal pump thereby helping in the drainage of the tear film. So the symptoms the patients can present with like patient can have watery or the epiphora. And, and then the patient can present with features of chronic conjunctivitis like redness, irritation and even the dry eye symptoms. Okay, And even there can be incomplete closure of the eyelids when there is severe uh, degree of ectropia leading to the corneal involvement also. So those are the symptoms of uh, ectropia. So when you examine the patient, what are the signs you elicit? There is obvious ectropia but that depends upon the grades of the ectropia. In grade 1 ectropia, when, the, when you ask the patient to look up, then only you can appreciate the punctum is not opposing to the globe. That is grade 1. In grade 2 ectropion, when the patient is looking straight ahead, that is in the primary position only, the punctum is not opposed to the globe. That is, there is aversion of the punctum. In grade 3, the whole of the lid along with the palpable conjunctiva and even the fornicial conjunctiva can be seen out. That is grade 3 ectropion. Along with these changes of ectropion, there are few changes in the conjunctiva as well. Like the conjunctiva looks red and velvety in appearance. There can be even keratinization, thickening of the conjunctiva. Along with that, the corneal changes can also be seen if there is exposure keratopathy. That is, there is chronic ectropia and the eyelids are not able to oppose and protect the entire surface leading to exposure keratitis. Okay. So, so when you made a diagnosis of ectropia, then you should do this test to confirm whether there is only horizontal lid laxity or the medial canthal tendon is also weak or the lateral canthal tendon is also involved. So for that, you should do this test. That is first one is the snap test. You just pull the middle of the lower eyelid almost 8 mm away from the globe and then just leave it. Normally, you should go back immediately to the globe and oppose. If it is taking more time or even when the patient is blinking, it's not going back in its, to its normal position that indicates that there is horizontal lid laxity. For the lateral canthal tendon laxity, normally the lateral canthus is sharp like this. In the lateral canthal tendon laxity, it becomes rounded and you can pull this lateral canthus to almost 1 to 2 mm medially. Okay? So that is possible when there is weakness of the lateral canthal tendon. So this confirms about the weakness. Coming to the medial canthal tendon, here you just look at the punctal position with respect to the cornea. So if you pull this lower eyelid laterally like this, if the medial canthal tendon can't be moved for more than 1 or 2 mm, then that is normal. If you can pull it up to the medial inverse, then there is mild to moderate degree of medial canthal tendon laxity and even in the severe cases, it can come up to the center of the pupil. So this is about medial canthal tendon laxity. Coming to involutional ectropion, because of the age related changes and as well as since the lower eyelid is constantly against the gravity, so as the age progresses, it loses its strength to keep it in the position. That is, there will be laxity of the medial canthal tendon as well as the lateral canthal tendon along with the horizontal lid laxity. Adding to that, there should be weakness of the orbicular circular muscle to cause the ectropia. 
So when you examine the patient, just see where the atropine is prominent. Is it the generalized atropine which is involving whole of the limb or it is more in the medial part, more in the lateral part or more in only in the center of the lower eyelid. So that decides the type of surgery which you want to do. Okay. So coming to the surgeries for involutional atropia, if it is generalized involving whole length of the lower eyelid, then you can go for lateral tarsal strip or the horizontal shortening of the eyelid. If it is involving only the lateral half, then cunt Zemanowski procedure or the lateral tarsal strip can be done. If it is involving only the medial half, then you should go for laxity operation. Okay. So the surgery is for the horizontal lid laxity, that is the lateral tarsal strip and the horizontal lid shortening. I have explained in my intro plan videos. You can go back and see there. So here in cunt Zemanowski procedure, the incision is placed almost 3 mm from the lower eyelid margin then extending along the contour of the lower eyelid till the lateral canthus means lateral to the lateral canthus then a skin flap is made like this and it is a flap is averted out then a pentagon shaped full thickness lid incision is taken and this part is excised followed by the opposition of the respective layers that is the orbicularis oculi muscle the tarsal plate and the conjunctiva are opposed to each other suture the flap which is made is pulled okay and the excess of the skin is removed and then the pineal sutures are placed so this corrects your lateral canthal tendon laxity along with this you can also have the lateral tarsal strip incorporated depending upon the laxity of the tendon so when there is medial canthal tendon laxity you can go for lazy tip procedure or even the pentagon excision of the lower eyelid medially so if you see in this diagram this is the punctum so at least 4 mm away from the punctum you should take a pentagon shaped incision again here this is also full thickness similar to the horizontal lid shortening then go ahead with the procedure that is the pentagon excision of the lower eyelid on medial side to strengthen the medial canthal tendon one thing or, or you can also combine the procedure with the lazy teeth procedure or it can be done independently that is when you avert the eyelid the conjunctiva is exposed on the conjunctiva at least 4 mm away from the punctum take a spindle shaped incision over the conjunctiva and excise this part of the conjunctiva and then suture this. After that it will correct the ectropia. So this is about your lazy teeth procedure. Coming to the cicatricial ectropia. This is secondary to the scar which is occurring over the lower eyelid skin as well as involving some part of the orbicular circular muscle. So, so there are two tests which will confirm the cicatricial ectropia. One is when you push the skin of the lower eyelid over the orbital ring there will be correction of the ectropia and it get worsen when the patient opens the mouth. So those will confirm that there is some component of cicatrization there. So what you can do for this, depending upon the severity of the cicatrization, you should plan for the surgery. So if it is just a localized scar, then excise the scar followed by Z plastic that will stretch in the skin horizontally or you can do the skin graft also. For the skin graft, you can take the skin from the upper eyelid or from the post-auricular region, even the pre-auricular region as well as the supraclavicular region. So that will be sufficient for your cicatricial ectropia. The next type is the paralytic type of ectropia that is second into facial nerve palsy. Here there will be retraction of both upper eyelid as well as the lower eyelid. Along with that there is brotosis. Brotosis, it is not the actual tosis, it is the brotosis. So that will that can narrow the palpebral aperture to some extent and confuse you. So remember there is brotosis also along with retraction of upper and the lower eyelid. So what the patient will present with here because there is exposure because of the retraction of the upper and lower eyelid there are symptoms and signs of the keratitis. Because there is ectropion of the lower eyelid the tear film drainage is hampered leading to watery. So these are the symptoms patients will present with. Initially you can treat these patients with the lubricating eye drops to take care of the anterior surface of cornea and also the topical antibiotics to pre prevent the secondary infections. You can do the botulinum toxin injection into the LPS muscle that is levator palpebrae superioris muscle to induce doses so that it is covering the anterior surface of cornea to some extent. Even you can do temporary tarsorophy. So coming to tarsorophy, tarsorophy is nothing but opposing the eyelids either temporarily or permanently. So just you examine the patient and just oppose the eyelid margins to assess how much amount of opposition is needed and where exactly it is needed to protect the cornea. After that coming to the procedure, first you create a raw surface here over the eyelid margin okay, by excising the skin and conjunctiva here and then with the help of sutures you just oppose the eyelid margins. So this is how it looks after the surgery. Tarsorophy can be temporary or permanent. 
temporary is done usually initially when you want to protect the cornea and give time for the patient now to recover and when the patient nerve is not recovering at all after even 6 to 8 months of follow up or when the facial nerve palsy is secondary to surgeries for the acoustic neuroma then it may not recover then you can go for permanent tarsoptic if there is medial electropion secondary to facial nerve palsy then you can go for median canthoplasty median canthoplasty this is nothing but you are just creating a raw surface here medial to the punctum medial to both upper and the lower punctum and then oppose this raw surfaces similar to what you did for tarsoptic so this is how it looks after the surgery. So here there will be sutures and the punctum is opposed to the lacus lacrimalis thereby helping in the drainage of the tear film also. Along with this medial canthoplasty, you can also combine the lazy T procedure which involves the spindle shaped excision of the conjunctiva and suture this. Thereby it will augment the correction. Okay. So all these procedures can be combined and done. But before doing any horizontal lip correction or the lateral tarsal strip procedure, if there is medial ectropion, always correct the medial ectropion first so that the punctum is opposed to the lacus lacrimalis. Otherwise, it will be pulled laterally and the bordering will not be corrected. Okay. So lateral tarsal strip can also be done. LPS disinsertion to induce the ptosis permanently. You can replace the gold weight in the upper eyelid to induce the mechanical ptosis and correct ectropion to some extent or you can do permanent tarsoropy involving very small area on the lateral half. Next is the mechanical ectropion which is secondary to some mass or the tumor which is involving lid margin or near to the lid margin. So that will lead to the mechanical pull over the lower lid. So the treatment is excise that particular mass followed by the horizontal lid correction. Okay. So hope the video was useful. If you have learned something out of my video, please do subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon for the further notification. Please do like and share my video.